procedures of crime scene processing. Upon the arrival at the crime scene, protection of the crime scene, marking, photographs, collection of physical evidence, and release of the crime scene. Importance of crime scene processing of evidence collection. Conducting a systematic examination of these areas, crime scene investigation uncover the physical evidence to help identify on what happened and who was involved of committing the crime. Arrival of the first responder. The first responder check the victim's condition, survey the crime scene, and take notes about the gathered information about the area. The first responder shall be responsible for the control of the crime scene area and conduct immediate investigation further. Arrival of the SOCO team. Scene of the Crime Operation Team is a forensic evidence response team engaged in the evidence collection process. They are the only person or authorized to enter inside the crime scene to prevent distraction and contamination of evidence. SOCO team is composed of Team leader, photographer, medical legal officer, sketcher, evidence collector or forensic examiner, and fingerprint examiner. The team leader coordinates with the first responder officer. He is also responsible for recording and taking notes of the time and date of the arrival at the crime scene, condition of weather, direction of the wind, and writing down information gathered from the first responder. The team leader approaches the victim and conduct walk through at the crime scene and the team leader conduct briefing of the whole team. The SOCO team protects the area by cordoning off the crime scene. The purpose of the cordon is to provide a highly visible barrier and protect the crime scene against potential damages and contamination of the evidence. Before entering the crime scene, the photographer photographs the whole crime scene for the general view. Proceed to the crime scene searching of possible evidence. The use of strip search method in searching. Walk slowly and at the same time. Pace long paths parallel inside of the rectangular and circle walk inside the crime scene. While searching, the team put markings beside the evidence found to proceed slowly and at the same time, photographer photographs the evidences. Note, the letter is for the cadaver and the number area for the physical evidence. Content, case number, date, and time are also indicated. There is a scale or tape measure to measure to the size of physical evidence. The crime scene photographer photographs the whole crime scene and physical evidence is found in general view, mid-range and close-up view. The sketcher measure the victim's body from the point of origin, which non-movable object. He also measure the distance of the physical evidence from the cadaver. The sketcher is also responsible to sketch the rough sketch of the crime scene. The crime scene sketcher uses triangular method. Collection of evidence. The evidence collector collects the physical evidence and place it in a sealed container. Note. Before collecting the firearm used, 
make sure that it is unloaded and safe. The blood evidence should be swabbed using a cotton buds and placed inside a sealed container. The collected evidence, such as bullets, should not be put together in crime-sealed container because there are instances that it can be tampered. The evidence collector tags and puts labels on evidence by placing its initial, the date and time of discovery of the physical evidence for proper identification before putting it inside the evidence box. The fingerprint examiner collects the fingerprints of the victim, then ink the remaining fingers and rolled it away from the body of the suspect. Same should be done in the left hand, only if the technician will turn to the right of the subject. Turnover of the evidence. The evidence collector turn over the pieces of evidences to the evidence custodian by signing the turnover receipt. The evidence custodian preserves the physical evidence. The chain of custody is properly secured and preserved. Court presentation of evidence. Presenting evidence in a court of law is a crucial aspect of any legal proceeding. It requires careful planning and execution to ensure that the evidence is presented effectively. The following steps outline the process for court presentation of evidence. Firstly, the attorney must gather all relevant evidence and organize it in a logical manner. This includes documents, photographs, videos, or any other physical evidence. Next, the attorney needs to prepare witnesses who will testify in court. This involves conducting interviews, reviewing their statements, and ensuring they are well prepared for cross-examination. During the trial, the attorney should introduce each piece of evidence systematically. They should establish its relevance and authenticity through witness testimony or expert opinions. The attorney must also adhere to the rules of evidence set forth by the court. This includes avoiding hearsay or irrelevant information that may be objected to by opposing counsel. Lastly, Effective communication skills are essential when presenting evidence in court. The attorney must be clear and concise while emphasizing key points that support their case. In conclusion, presenting evidence in court requires careful preparation and execution. In light of the evidence presented, the court reached a decision and issued a warrant of arrest for the suspect bringing the legal process one step closer to its conclusion.